Welcome back. I hope you all are doing well. We're going to continue our discussion about how the low back can affect our lower legs and our feet. So last week we talked about how the low back can create pinching and that goes down the legs and affects the front of the foot, which can lead to the foot dropping and cause foot slapping when you're walking. Well, this can also happen where the low back gets pinched at the nerves, where the nerves exit, and it affects your calf muscle here. And this shows up differently from the other condition in that when you have the calf muscles atrophy, you all of a sudden you can't push up onto your tiptoes. So you may notice it where you can't lift up or you may notice when you're walking, you can't walk fast or push off. And so you start to lift your leg and bring it forward instead of pushing off to propel yourself forward. So the first one that we talked about last week, this foot slapping, you may catch it earlier because you can hear it or you may be tripping. So you may notice this more than this other condition where your calf muscle starts to atrophy and over time, you don't really notice it until you need to go run somewhere or you need to jump or go up on your toes to get something at a high counter on a high cabinet. This actually happened to one of my relatives many, many years ago. This was before I got my doctorate. And he called me up and said, hey, all of a sudden I can't run. And he's a young guy. I think he was in his 40s at the time and he couldn't run. And so I talked to him and I knew it was likely coming from his low back because I had taken enough coursework at that point. And I told him, I directed him to get some help and to have him work on his low back and relaxing his low back and getting his trunk into position to free up the nerve that was affecting his calf. Now, over time, he was able to do this because he used to have a very tight low back. He was under a lot of stress, so the muscles had tightened up and compressed on the nerve. Now, he also had disc issues and degeneration, but that wasn't necessarily the cause. He had had that for many, many years, but it would just so happen that he underwent a lot of stress right before this incident. The back muscles tightened up, they compressed, they didn't know how to let go, the nerve got irritated and affected his calf. Now, after he relaxed his muscles and learned how to do this, it took time before that calf muscle came back because that nerve has to heal all the way down your leg. That does take time, but he worked very hard at it. And as he could sense his back relaxing and his calf muscle kicking back in, he had various exercises that helps that muscle regenerate its strength and its activation powers. At this point, he's completely fine. He can run, he can hike, he can do anything now. But he had to learn some changes in his daily habits and what he did. So that way he didn't overuse his low back muscles that caused the compression on his nerve. So you may not notice this one right away because it takes time for you to realize that you're not able to push off. So one good test every day, make sure, can you get up on your tippy toes? If so, you know at least that calf muscle's kicking in and you're on the right track for keeping yourself healthy. If you need help, please reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. On my website, you can go to the contact page and reach out to me. Go to uh, paberinstitute.com, P-A-B-R institute.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Bye.